All right, it's an honour to be here with um, Christian Cozier, um, Paradise Motorsports, Red Dog Racing, um, and the Mighty Mouse Builder. Always want to get this gentleman on KVTV. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good today. How are you doing? Fine, I'm in Tobago. Yes, good. Huh? I'm, I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon. Great used cars at Sting Used Cars in McBean. Let me talk about this baby here because I understand frame was from the 70s. Yes. Right, so you, you found that you salvaged it and you brought it back to life. So tell us a little bit about the history. Okay, the history of this race car. This car is called the Terrapin or Terrapin Mini. It was designed back in the mid 60s in England as a hill climb racer using um, parts from the old model Mini, Austin Mini. So it ran in Austin Mini engine, Austin Mini hubs and brakes. Uh, we found this frame in Trinidad about 10 years ago and it was just a bare frame. And um, with the intention there was to go drag racing because we used to drag race a mini moke. So wait, all right, you found the frame, but how, how did you know that it was a frame for that? Look, who, who knew? I, saw, well, I was into minis. I had five of them. When I saw the frame, it had on the brakes. And I immediately recognized the, the, the it was a special aluminum mini racing brake with, a, with cooling fins on it. And I immediately, I said, that's mini, hold on a second. And I asked a couple of questions, I found out what the car was. I've been doing some research. And we used to drag race a mini moke. So the, the plan then was lift the mini moke engine, put it straight into this and go drag racing, because this is much, much lighter. That plan never worked out. And the frame sat for about 10 years, one garage or another. And we decided with the drag and wine on the solar decks that we were going to build this car for a drag and wine competition. Um, it's a, basically built as a hill climber, time attacker. It will do drag and wine, autocross, um, maybe even some drag racing when we get to it. Uh, the first time the car drove since we've been building it was last weekend. And now we're here in Tobago to compete. So how, how was your first test run last weekend? A lot of teething problems. Uh, like I said, the first run, I literally mean the first run. We did not really test it at building. We drove it around the car park, never got out of first gear. There's no real place to go and test the car at speed. Now we have back the track and water field. I suppose we can get some track days and really put some seat time into the car. So we went out last week. We had traction problems, steering problems, uh, shifter problems, all of which we hopefully corrected this one week we had between Dragonfly and Trinidad and, and Tobago this weekend. We've changed the tires. We've changed some of the steering geometry. We put a damper on the shifter because the shifter kept jumping back in the, into neutral. Right. So um, we'll see today what has been done. And I'm probably going to end up on another list of little things to do. Uh, the intention really is to shake down the car, fix everything that needs to be done. Uh, the body work should go on next week. Um, the real, cha the real um, challenge from this car will be next year. We'll be racing for points and the championship. This, this, the latter half of this year right now is ready for tuning and adjusting and shaking down the car. Which championship? Uh, Dragonwine. Oh, the Dragonwine right. championship, yes. Okay. Right. So, um, the frame. You, 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 you say that you're going to put a body on the frame. This isn't the finished car, no? This is not. This is not the finished car. If you look at the frame here, you see these curved panels here. Right. Right. There's an aluminum body that goes on that. It looks more right. like a Formula One car at that time. And then there's a panel over the front, right. complete nose panel on the car that goes up. So it will have a full body. You can see race numbers, race stickers, sponsorship on it then. So, so, so what? The frame you're going to build, you're trying to get it back to what it originally looked like? It will more or less look originally what it looked like. I think the only difference would be the nose of the car has changed slightly with our radiator and our wing on the front. But the rest of the body work will, be, will mimic exactly what the car looked like before. Right. Okay. And uh, I, I see you've got um, a note on the back with your name on it. Um, Christian Cozier and Robert Dow. Who's Robert Dow? Robert Dow owns the uh, fabricating workshop where we did all the work. He's our welder, a metallurgist. And um, in his help, we did, I did all the design and all the engineering and some of the welding. He really did a lot of the welding, especially the aluminum welding, a lot of the aluminum fabrication he did with TIG welding and so forth. Um, and his, the car was basically built in his shop down in Chagaramas in Trinidad. Um, okay. We didn't know anything about that. Um, the driver, owner of the car, is Kirk Hoeing, and he disappeared with the wing one afternoon and he came back and that was on it. Oh, right. <laughs> so we didn't know he was going to do that. Cool. So, so what? Sponsors? Do you have sponsors? Currently, no. Currently, um, we are looking at sponsors right now. We have a couple of promises um, from a couple of sponsors. We have a, a lubricant and a um, fluid sponsor that we are talking to right now. Um, there are a couple of people very interested in sponsoring the car. Again, Without the bodywork, there's no way to put any sponsorship logos or anything on as yet. So we haven't fully approached them because we haven't fully finished the car. Right. Um, strangely enough, we finished the car in time to run last weekend. So you have Dragonwine 4. The very next weekend is Dragonwine Tobago. The weekend after that is Solidex and then Dragonwine 5. 
And then at the end of September, we have a time attack at Wallerfield. So we've had a full, we finished the car, but we have full, four full weeks of competition. Right? And that's a lot of work to do. You know, there's no real break in between. So hopefully, like I said, when we get back to Trinidad, take a couple of days, and then a day or two, we can do the body work on the car. We got, we, remember, we make everything from scratch on this car, except for the basic frame. We built everything in our shop. Right? We ordered the steering rack and the brake assemblies and the steering wheel and the shocks. Everything else was built by us. That's fascinating. So, all right, you built this. Can I ask, I mean, what qualified you to build this? Have you built other cars previously? You, you must have some experience, yeah? I am an automotive master technician. Um, I've been around racing all my life. My father was one of the very early members of TASC, which then became TASC in Trinidad. He's a part TAS. of TASC. The Trinidad Automobile Sports Club. That that changed into the Trinidad and Tobago Automobile Sports Association afterwards. My father was a past president of a former old racer back then. He passed away very recently and he supported this project all the way. Uh, I trained at Renault in Paris, France. And then a couple of years later, I trained at BMW in Germany as an automotive master technician. I was service manager at BMW for a while. I've been around cars all my life. I trained at Hunter Engineering in, uh, in North America. So uh, alignment and suspension work. I, I used to sell the alignment equipment, install them, and train the technicians to align cars. So I know suspension geometry, I know how it works, I know the angles. Um, I have a lot of training I can't even begin to mention. Over the years, I've picked up things over here, and I've had lubricants training, tire training. No, no, listen, <laughs> I, I, I know that you're big in the game. I just personally want to find out yeah. what other projects have you built? What other projects have I built? Oh, it's been a while. Huh? Uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a RAV4, we used to drag a mine. Uh -huh. The short BB is rather four, you know, we ran that. We have a Civic that we race also, anti Ferrari Civic, right. which is not here today because we have a gearbox problem. Working on this car hasn't given me time to finish this car to come back here. All right, there are a couple of other projects we ran over the years. We used to drag race back in the day. Uh, we had a mini MOOC, we used to drag race uh, or mini engine. And that's another project where we built all the engine parts ourselves and because the bringing parts from England is expensive. So you have to, you, you adapt a lot of stuff and make a lot of your own stuff. So you're big into fabrication and stuff like big that? Into, big into design and fabrication, you know, I, I can visualize it in my head and turn it around and look at it and know how to make it. And then I can talk to Robert and Robert and I will sit down and we'll design it and make it ourselves, you know. Um, basically our shop now is, um, we have Dow Fabrication along with Red Dog Racing. You know, and the motto basically is if you can think it up, we, would, and we, we can build it for you. Okay, nice. Right. Now I did ask you earlier, if you was my height, would you be driving this? And you said no. No, I do not consider myself the better driver. I am much more comfortable building the cars. I have a very good driver, the owner of the car, Kirk Hoeing. He's a multiple champion. He raced at the SCCA in the States and he's won championships over there as well. Uh, he's a very good driver. And um, the car, although the car is 40 years old, the car fits him like it was built for him. Right? right? And that, that just happened to be coincidence, you know? So he's comfortable with it. Um, actually, I think it frightens him just a little bit, <laughs> right? But um, yeah, I think he's a better driver and I'm the better builder. So okay. we, work, we work at it that way. But do you drive at all? Yes, I do. Right. I do. I used to compete. I, have, I used to compete in Solidex. Um, did a little bit of drag and wine, you know. But like I said, I am more comfortable building and tuning. Um, to, to go down to a racetrack, build and tune your car and then drive, you know. And it's a lot. Go and repair and fix and thing. It's a, it's a lot of work, you know. You, you, you put a lot of load on yourself as a builder and a driver. And I've said so over the years, you see a lot of um, competitors out there trying to be the owner, the builder, the driver of the car. And they may be good at one or two of those aspects, but never all three. And that's where they fall apart. They may build a very nice car and they can't drive it. Or they may be very good drivers, you know, but the car's not reliable. So, you know, you need to break that, break that up, you know, get a builder and get a driver and balance out the team. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Christian, you, you can tell, this man knows what he's talking about. You know, he knows his limitations as well. He says he doesn't want to drive. Listen, wishing you the best of luck for this event. Hope, and it's Tobago, you, oh, yeah. you're enjoying the lime. I think, I think we're going to do the first round of practice and qualify and then we're going to the beach. <laughs> so, we'll take it from there. Yeah. Bless up, thank you. Thanks. Thing used cars. We got all different types of cars. 5,000, 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 60,000, you choose it. 